Hey everybody, welcome back to the Principal Outdoors YouTube channel. I, I'm so amazed with the response that I've been getting. Lots of good questions. I love answering your questions whenever I can. So feel free to keep putting questions in the comments. I'll answer as soon as I can. Um, but you know, 300, um, uh, over 300 uh, subscribers now, uh, a couple of videos, well over 10,000 views. So I really appreciate it. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. So uh, let's keep it up and thanks for everything. Um, so today what I thought I would do is I'm going to do a couple of videos on specifically how I rigged boats. Not, not too much detail, but just basically which motors I use and which sonars I use uh, to try to make it easier for you guys that are going out there and uh, buying the, your, your trolling motors and your electronics for your boat. Um, so I just wanted to go over that. This is part one. So part one is going to be a small boat like this. So right here, this is a little Smoker Craft John boat. And, you know, it really is kind of overloaded with product. Uh, that's because we use it for demos. It'll probably never get on the water. But let's assume that this boat is any aluminum boat from 12 to 16 feet. Let's say we'll go up to a 16-foot boat. My second, the part two, will be bigger boats than that. I'll, I'll get into my Lund and show you how I rigged that one in the next video. But for now, let's focus on boats that are, like I said, 12 feet to 16 feet, right? So... Uh, how would you rig that or how do I recommend that you rig that? Let's start first with the trolling motor. So any boat 16 feet and under, a 12 volt trolling motor is plenty of power. So 55 pounds of thrust is what you're going to get in 12 volts, right? For this boat, I wanted a link motor. I wanted a motor that had iPilot link. So my only choice in that uh, respect was to get a Tarova because we don't make power drives with link. And uh, we don't make Alteras, the high end, in 12 volts. So my choice was a Tarova 80 and it's a, a sorry, Tarova 55 with Link. And it's a great choice. I just love the Tarovas. It's, a, it's the best selling motor in the market, actually. Um, and um, it's got everything you need. So just a couple of features of the Tarova, just to say how I like it, is very easy to stow and deploy to get it in the water. Um, I've talked about this in some other videos as well. It has uh, a, a band in here, a metal band, that makes it easier. It's lift assist, so it helps you pull it in and out of the water. Um, so that's the, the main point of this is that for a boat to 16 feet, all you need is a 12-volt motor. I strongly recommend you get one with iPilot. Um, you can get a power drive with just iPilot if you want. Um, or uh, if you, like I said, if you need link, you're gonna have to go up to a Tarova, which has a whole bunch of great features as well. One other important difference, anytime you get iPilot, if it's a power drive, the entry level, there will be no pedal and you can't add a pedal. And if it's a Tarova, it comes with a pedal, Pretty except we have one model that that's clearly says it doesn't come with a pedal, but you can add it. So Tarova, you can have a pedal, power drive, you can't have a pedal. So that's it for the bow mount, uh, 12 volt. Other things you want to consider with the bow mount is uh, if you do get an iPilot motor, they come with this uh, heading sensor right here. It is in the box, um, and it, uh, except for power drive, but in Tarovas, it is in the box. And it's basically a digital compass, electronic compass that communicates with the motor through Bluetooth. So you can install it. On this one, I installed it at the front of the boat. My other boat, you'll see I installed it in the back of the boat. You can install it anywhere as long as there's no magnetic interference. You can check that actually with a regular compass and see if there's interference before you install it. No interference, go ahead and install it wherever you want. And again, that's a compass. So an iPilot motor has GPS in the head. Um, so it knows where it is in the world, but it doesn't know where it's pointing. Therefore, we have this digital compass through Bluetooth, which is communicating with the motor and telling, you, telling the motor where the boat is pointed, which makes it much more accurate. So again, that heading sensor is in the box with iPilot. Uh, Tarovas and, and anything above that, iPilot links as well. The other thing you might want to consider is a release bracket. So on this boat, I put a, I had to kind of rig this one a little different because it is a John boat. There's not much mounting area for uh, a trolling motor. So I had to build something up there, but a release plate. So all it is, a release plate is if you want to be able to take the motor on and off at the end of the day or at easily at the end of the year. You don't necessarily need a release plate, um, you know, if the motor's going to stay on there and you're not worried about somebody stealing it, then you can mount it direct to the, to the nose of your boat um, with no need for a release plate. Uh, but if you do want to be able to take it off, and you may want to have to take it off because of your cover uh, or 
because you leave your boat in the water at the cottage and you don't want somebody to steal it, steal the trolling motor off it. In that case, you, you'll need a release bracket. There's a couple of models. I'm going to put up the, uh, the different models and different codes so you can know which one to get. And it all depends on which motor you choose. Um, and there's, there's a couple of varieties and release brackets, but that's one thing to consider as well. The only other thing really to consider when you're looking at your trolling motor is the plug, the male and female plug. Some boats come with these plugs, uh, which is fine. Just make sure they're rated uh, strong enough for the amp draw of that motor. Uh, Minn Kota did come out with a new plug this year, and I really don't want this to sound like a commercial, uh, um, but this is the strongest plug out there in the market. Uh, it's super, super strong, can handle any power going through it. Uh, you know, it's, it's got a lock on it, very easy to install. Uh, I'll put those codes up for you too as well. So that's really it for trolling motors. Just the size of the boat, you know, 16 foot, again, 12 volt. Anything above that, I would go to 24 volts, which I'll show you in the next video. Um, but yeah, just make sure you get a good 12 volt motor. Uh, and I, again, I strongly suggest high pilot. You know, I get a lot of uh, messages on people that bought motors, you know, a few years back without high pilot and they want to upgrade. It is possible, but it, it's not inexpensive to upgrade. Most people end up selling their motor without iPilot and buying a new one with iPilot. That's what we're finding in the last few years. So strongly consider iPilot, even if it's just for the spot lock function, you know, being able to hit a button and your boat stays in one spot while you fish or while you retie or while you give a snack to the kids, you know, that's, a, that's a, just a great feature. So consider that strongly. So now let's look at electronics on the boat. So Again, I narrowed my choice in the trolling motor to a Tarova with iPilot Link because I wanted Link. Now that motor comes with a transducer built into it. So I, if, you're buying, if you're using this boat for fishing, and that's specifically who I'm trying to address as people for rigging your boats for fishing, I strongly suggest that you put a sonar up front when you're fishing because you're going to be, I mean, I'm talking for people casting. Trolling is a different story. But if you're a casting guy um, and you're going to be at the front of the boat, then I strongly suggest you buy a trolling motor with a transducer built in. Most of them have the transducer built in and get a sonar up front. What I really want you to avoid is taking your sonar that's at the console and moving it up front when you fish and then moving it back. Or even worse, I think sometimes is when you put just one sonar at the console and you turn it towards the front. So now you're fishing up front and you're looking back all the time and you're looking back all the time and you're looking back all the time. You're going to get a sore neck. It's not the best thing, right? So even if, if you go with a, a very low-end sonar up front, uh, I strongly suggest that you do that. It's much easier um, to do that. So looking at the sonar up front, you've bought a trolling motor, find out what transducer is in it. If it's just a 2D transducer, so just that's the motor that I have here, it's got a US2 transducer. That means it's just a 2D transducer in it. So in that case, I would go with a unit up front that is just 2D. Because if you buy a unit that has down imaging, it's not going to work with that 2D sonar. The other boat that I'll show you has a DI transducer built into it. So up front, I put a DI sonar on it. Um, some motors have side imaging transducers built in. In that case, you would want a side imaging uh, unit up front. I personally prefer DI transducers. Back to this boat, I didn't have a choice. The motor only comes with US2. So up front, I have a Helix with just 2D sonar built into it. Now you get into the size of the unit that you want. Just whatever your budget, just go with your budget. You know, if you've, if you've only got, you know, room for a Helix 5, then put a Helix 5 up front. It's great. It's just smaller screen, you know. If you're old like me, you'll have trouble seeing it. But uh, aside from that, it's fine, right? Um, on this boat, I put a Helix 8, um, but it could be a 7. It could be... Uh, 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 bigger than that too as well. The one thing I did want to have up front is a sonar that's networkable. Because even in this little boat, I want everything to talk to each other. I want to be able to control my trolling motor from my sonars. That one boat network thing that I talked about in other videos, right? So I made sure that the, the sonar I bought, the, the Helix 8 G4N. So it has to have an N in the code. The only time that gets difficult is when you get into Helix 7s. There are some that are G3s and some are G3Ns. If you want to have a network, make sure it's a G3N, okay? So let's say we put a Helix 7 G3N up front here. Um, 
Then we go to the console unit. So again, I, I strongly suggest that get your budget together. The easiest way to shop for these things is figure out your budget for yourself. You don't have to tell a salesman what your budget is, but know in your mind what your budget is for the whole package and then buy accordingly. And you may, you may find you can go below your budget and you may find you have to stretch it a little bit, but just, just keep, have a budget set for yourself. Um, so down at the console, so I, this is, we'll call this your main unit. Here, I strongly suggest a side imaging unit. Um, why? Because side imaging is the fastest way to learn about fishing. If you want to learn why fish relate to structure, then you need to know what structure is down there. And side imaging will do that. There's even better things, 360 imaging and, and, and something else coming out that I'm not supposed to mention called Mega Live. But, I, so, um, but side imaging is the best thing. And so I always, every boat I've ever owned, I put a side imaging unit at the console. I've been doing it for more than 10 years because what I do is I drive around and I use side imaging to find structure. And I, when I find structure on the side imaging screen, I can actually put my cursor there and mark that structure. And now this ties into why my units are networkable and talk to each other is because of those waypoints, I want them to go up front to the front unit. So as I drive around, I go to an area, I find three or four waypoints. I mark those three, four waypoints on side imaging. I stop, shut off my engine. I go up front, turn on my unit. Boom, there's the four waypoints that I, that I just saved. And now I can take with my trolling motor and just scoot right over on top of those waypoints and fish them. So I strongly recommend a side imaging unit for the console. So again, this starts, I mean, we have side imaging units in five, Helix five, I will say, I wouldn't waste my money. The, the, the screen is too small to really see stuff in side imaging. S Helix 7, again, side imaging is fine in Helix 7. Go to a G3N, so make sure it's networking so it can share. Um, and even better is go to a Helix 8 because that's mega side imaging. That's the best side imaging on the market right now. So maybe go, you know, Helix 8 side imaging at the, at the console and then a Helix 8, uh, either DI or 2D, based on what trolling motor you have, uh, up front. Uh, get them networked. Um, I'll put up all the part numbers and show you how they're networked so you know how to do it. Um, and uh, you'll be super happy with that. If your boat is about 16 feet long or less, you can install that side imaging transducer on the transom of the boat and it will read at speed. The general rule I use, you know, anytime you get around 45, 50 miles per hour, you may want to install a second transducer. I'll show that on the next boat. Um, but for a 16 foot boat or less, just install the side imaging transducer on the back and it'll read perfectly at high speed. It's not going to read side imaging at high speed, uh, but it'll read 2D for safety so you know uh, how deep you are. Okay. So that covers the two sonars. I hope I covered that uh, very well. The only one thing you got to think about with sonars is mounting them. So every Humminbird, every Helix comes with a bracket, obviously. So you can mount that bracket right up front on your bow of your boat. Same thing at your console. You can just take that bracket, screw it in. All the units are very easy to take off. There's two knobs in the back here. You loosen them. You could take the knobs off or take the unit off so it doesn't get stolen. One suggestion is um, a mounting bracket. So, uh, so an aftermarket mounting bracket. I, I like using Geiger Tech. I actually distribute Geiger Tech uh, in North America. And uh, these are super high-end mounts. Uh, they're all stainless steel, billet, st um, uh, sorry, billet aluminum, not stain stainless steel. Super, super solid. This is the extreme mount. On the unit up here, I have the uh, Pro mount, which is a little uh, smaller and lighter. Uh, so these are really, really solid mounts. Again, you could still take off the unit, but now your unit's adjustable. And some, certain boats with windshields and stuff, you may need a mount, either like this or another brand, but you may need a mount to get it uh, away from the windshield. So something to consider, look at when you're installing whether you want it. I am quite often adjusting my sonars up front on the bow because of sun or whatever. Um, uh, so I find it very practical to have a mount uh, for my sonars. Um, so that covers mounts and everything. Uh, I think that's really it. Um, so I'll just cover quickly on how they all work together. It's an iPilot link motor. Let's bring it all together now. This is an iPilot link motor. It has an ethernet cable coming out of it, transducer cable and an ethernet cable. Um, ethernet cable plugs into 
uh, the, a box. So we've got three things talking to each other, two sonars and the iPilot link motor. The way they communicate is through Ethernet. It's not wireless, right? Uh, the way they communicate with each other. Uh, so it works through Ethernet. So uh, if you have two Ethernet items, let's say we just had these two sonars, well, then I could get an adapter for each one, just a little adapter called an ASECQDE, one for each unit, and an Ethernet cable between the two, and they will share information, okay? No need for a box, for a five-port five switch or box. As soon as you add a third item that's Ethernet, so the trolling motor, now you've got three things trying to talk to each other. Now you need the Ethernet port, that box. So I installed it right in here, and plugged into it is Sonar 1, Sonar 2, the trolling motor, the trolling motor comes with uh, the Ethernet cable and a 30-foot extension. So if it's plugging into a box, you don't need any adapters, right? Um, and there, everything's talking to each other. Now, they do have Bluetooth. The, the Humminbird network units, they do have Bluetooth. So if you want to go a bit further and you want to install, let's see if I can get this going. Well, there's a downrigger. We can talk about that. But there's also Raptors. So downriggers, Raptors, uh, they can be controlled through Bluetooth from your units wirelessly. So I think that covers it all. Again, if you have any questions, just put them down in the comments. I will get to your answers. I sure do appreciate you listening. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Make sure you catch my next video on the bigger boat, which is gonna be a Lund uh, 1875 Pro V Bass. Uh, uh, so we'll go through all that. I'm in the middle of rigging it now, almost finished. So when that's done, very soon I'll do a video on that. Uh, thanks again, and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon.